a heads up for my family and my parents. Yeah. How are the things going in Sri Lanka? Uh, so I was born in Sri Lanka, uh, have horses in a big part of my life. What are your plans in Sri Lanka? Biggest focus, my end game, my everything is to qualify for the Olympics in Los Angeles 2028. Ah, right. Where the best riders, the biggest competitions are actually taking place. International professional rider, they thought it was totally crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have about 10 horses now that I'm riding intensively. Right. Welcome to the DN One on One show. Today we are going to uh, interview a special sports star actually. Uh, you know that uh, Sri Lanka have produced a number of sports person internationally. So basically we are going to uh, interview a special sports star who represents Sri Lanka in the Olympic field of Olympic. So welcome to the show, Matilda Carlson. Thank you so much for having me. So how are the things going in Sri Lanka? Amazing. I'm so happy to be back. Yeah. Uh, it's been very hectic. The, I came two days ago right. and I have been scheduled up since I landed. Right. But I've met so many of my friends and fantastic people and I have had a great time. Right. Okay. So Matilda, it was great to interview you. Actually, thanks for the invitation. Mm -hmm. And uh, first of all, I must ask you, how did you went to Sweden? I mean, the start of your proceedings went in Sri Lanka, yeah. but how did you migrate when you were, when you were infant, you went to Sweden? Yes. Tell us about the early stage of your life. Uh, so I was born in Sri Lanka, and then I was adopted to Sweden when right. I was uh, a baby. Right. So I grew up in Sweden with lovely parents. I was very lucky to be adopted from with a family that I felt was uh, was my family. Of course, you know yeah. I didn't feel any different just because I was adopted. I had my parents didn't love me any less. Yeah. Definitely not. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and there I found the love for horses. So. Um Basically, how did you adjust to the Swedish, Swedish conditions, actually, uh, mm -hmm. being born in Sri Lanka? I mean, you're a child, but you have to adapt yourself, being surrounded with the kids and have to uh, uh, change with your uh, personalities and all the Sri Lankan environment, you have to pull it back. How did you change to the environment I in mean, Sweden? I mean, I... Because I was a very little baby when I went to Sweden, I don't have any memories from Sri Lanka back yeah, then. Yeah. But of course, growing up in Sweden, everyone, all my ki my friends was uh, tall, blonde, with blue eyes, obviously. <laughs> and so there was never like a secret that I was adopted or that I was yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. But heads up for my family and my parents, because yeah. I, I always knew I was different. I looked different, yeah. but I never felt that as a negative thing. Like I loved, uh, not being like everyone else, yeah. and I never felt any negativity uh, not being tall, blonde, and blue eyed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that was uh, that was a great con country actually. The, the country also supports the people everywhere Definitely. in the world actually. Yeah. So, how was this school era? So, how did you, the, how did the, uh, the love for the sports came to, through you? Uh, in Sweden, uh, show jumping or equestrian is the second biggest sport in Sweden next to soccer. Oh, is so, it? Yeah. yeah so cool. we have a lot of fantastic riders. Yeah. Uh, riding schools are really big in Sweden. Yeah. So a lot of kids go to riding school to ride just basically social right, to right. meet their friends. Right, and right. like, you know, but uh, I went and I fell in love with the horses. It was very clear that I will uh, have horses in a big part of my life yeah. uh, mm. forever. Mm. So uh, that's an in interesting part that they have schools, separate schools to teach equestrian sports. Yeah. Uh, tell us more about, about <laughs> the experience that you had in, this, in uh, the uh, field yeah. of training in, in that sport. I mean back then it was just more for fun, you know, you, you go and you ride your pony for like an hour right. and most kids they go back home after they've been finish riding because right. that was the fun part for most of my friends. Right. Uh, I loved being around horses. I love taking care of them. I still do. It's the biggest passion of mine is uh, being in the stable, uh, spending time with my horses. And I think that that is the key to become a successful show jumper, that I do spend so much time with my horses. I know my horses very, very well and they trust me. Right. And then the other part is that how did you manage to uh, continue it as a sport mm -hmm. you know that uh, you have told that uh, 
the friends and families are uh, uh, putting their children to meet some friends yeah. and colleagues, spend some time, quality time with the friends. But you have picked yourself to do a sporting event yeah. as a sporting event. I mean, I have to say, like even for my Swedish parents, when yeah. I when I decided to go pro and spend, you know, like be an international professional rider, they thought it was totally crazy. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I never, I started competing really late. Yeah. I never thought that I would have the chance to become an international show jumper yeah. or nevertheless an Olympian. Yeah. And, uh, but I was so blessed to find good people that believed in me and great sponsors, horse owners in the past um, that helped me become professional. That's great, that's cool. So, uh, and let's talk about your school age. Yeah. I mean, uh, did you show your skills in equestrian at the school era also? No, not at all. I mean, I have to say I was often told that I had no talent. And for, I think a lot of people that could have been something that would have pulled them down. Um, mm -hmm. I, n I also like never really felt that way. Of course, I didn't love hearing that I didn't have much talent, mm -hmm. but I was riding hours and hours and hours and training and training and training and until I could keep up with the best of the best. Right, that's great. And it's about uh, representing a country. That every sportsman has a dream to yeah. represent your country. And what, how did you feel about representing your country in a, such a wonderful and the greatest platform on the earth, actually? Uh, I mean, it's the proudest moment of my life yeah. and the biggest achievement I have ever achieved. Um, I think it's very hard to describe the proudness and what an incredible feeling it was to riding into that arena in yeah. Tokyo representing this beautiful country. So uh, are there any achievements regarding in your region yeah. with the equestrian sports uh, that you have achieved? Let's remind about that. I mean, I've been a part of the Global Champions League yeah. for three years. Yeah. Uh, and to compare it, it's like Champions League for soccer. Yeah. Uh, it's the highest level you can ah, compete great. at. That's great. And that have, of course, that was the deciding moment mm -hmm. uh, when I felt like I could probably maybe manage to qualify for yeah. Olympic Games. Yeah. It was just because I got this experience right. to ride on the top level. So how did you feel that when you got selected to Olympics when yeah. you got the message and what did it, it was the feeling that I you mean, had? I mean, yeah, I get asked that quite often. How was the feeling when you knew you were qualified? I mean, it wasn't any big news for me because you do keep track on all your rivals ah, right, right. through the whole qualification year. Right. I, I, I knew all the rounds, I knew all the results from the ones that could maybe have a chance to qualify instead right. of me. Because you only have two individual spots in all the um, South Asian. Yeah, nice. um, so it's really, really difficult to qualify. That means that you have followed the, uh, the, uh, the other competitors and yeah. you had that mathematics going around you, right? Of course, you know exactly how good you need to be, right. what is being expected, how many points you need. Right. Uh, I mean, that is like a daily thing or like not a daily, it's like an hour or <laughs> thing. You check the other results and you go like, okay, I need like a hundred more points and then right. I, will be, I will be better than everyone else. Uh, so I, have, I, I knew before it got public, obviously. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a good quality of a great sportsman, right? I mean, you, I, mean I think in everything in life, if you're organized yeah. and you have a vision yeah. and you follow that plan, it's just going to make it easier. <laughs> right, okay. and. Um, it was uh, now the things have changed and the competitors have changed also the there are lots of competitions of course in Sri Lanka we don't have much about this don't know about the equestrian uh, the facilities also not much yep. so what are your plans about uh, spreading the sports in Sri Lanka or are there any um, proposals or suggestions to Sri Lankan community about the sports I think the most important has already been done that we have uh, a few riding schools here to give the opportunity to young people to take riding lessons and spend uh, hours uh, in the stable just getting to know the horses yeah. and learn more about the horses. I said before like you pay for riding lessons yeah. but spending time with the horses would probably be for free yeah. and that's the most important part 
right. to become a writer. Right. And I think it would be fantastic if we could help each other to maybe develop a program to bring young students abroad to just see how the sports really works, works yeah. in uh, like in Europe, yeah. but where the best riders, the biggest competitions are actually taking place, right. and then come back to have a vision, yeah, vision. and we can work together to right. maybe arrange uh, competitions here. Yeah. And my biggest dream is, of course, that Sri Lanka one day will have a team right. as well. Yeah, we do have some wishes about the Olympic Games and the equestrian uh, team someday. And um, of course, and the other thing is that uh, uh, when it compares to the other other countries in the world, yeah. the this sport has evolved a great deal of standards. So. Uh, uh, Sri Lanka do have some interested people, but they don't have uh, much on opportunities. Yeah. So, are there any suggestions about competitions that they can compete in the world arena or the Olympics? So, how are they going to qualify for that? Also? I think important is just like me, I left Sweden to go to Germany, which was at that time the mecca of right. show jumping. Right. Um, I mean, that is definitely a bigger step for me to go from Sweden to Germany, a, a smaller step yeah. uh, than for someone going from Sri Lanka to Europe. Yeah. But still, I think you need to be where the best of the best are. Ah. And you need to measure yourself if you think that you want to do a, a championship or, right. or even like a Olympics. Mm. You need to know where you stand. You need to know, am I good enough? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. What do I need to practice? And you can only do that by being where the best. Right. Okay, being an equestrian and I mean, now you have some horses with you, right? Yeah. How many do you have? Um, I have about 10 horses now that I'm riding intensively. Right. You have separate names for them? Yes, of course. Right. <laughs> so what are, tell us about the names. Yeah, yeah, well, I would tell you about my Olympic horse Chopin because I right. love talking about him. Right, okay. <laughs> he was my partner for the Olympic Games. The uh, Tokyo, right? Yes. Yeah. And he was actually born at my place, so he's been with me his whole life. Right. Okay. And that is uh, something that quite rare. I was right. one of many, very few, that had a horse at the Olympics as their partner that mm. they have bred themselves. Yeah. So he's very, very special to me. Yeah. And, uh, yeah so uh, and you remind the Tokyo Olymp Olympics that the experience that you had the uh, with the uh, the horse. Yeah. What was what was happened in there, and what was the uh, the outcome, and the, what what do you feel about the incidents, and how did you cope with that? Because, because there are people who can, who are willing to get into the sports yeah. and who are learning about the sports. So, what are your experience about that? In that, um, I mean, th that this was uh, Olymp Tokyo Olympics yeah. was the first major championship that I ever did, and my, it was the first one for right. my horse as well. Um, we had two super rounds in Tokyo that he felt very, very confident, and actually going into that second round. Um, my hopes was very good because he had been performing so so well until right. then and I think what actually went wrong you know he stopped at the water he got yeah. afraid of the moving water right um, and he never had any problem with that before right but um, I know now that we were both a little bit unexperienced yeah I could feel that he was probably taking adapting to my emotions right. that I you know, it's it's a four meter wide fence. Right. Like the water is four meter wide, right. and it's it's very wide. But right. I I approached it right. probably with the power of if it would be twenty meters. Right. right. And he, I I know I think now that he probably just got scared of my pressure. Ah right. You know, like he could feel like what is going on, right, and then right. he just and honestly we are we are partners. Oh, if. Yeah. If he doesn't want to do something, I can never force him to do it. Yeah, yeah. So I was never disappointed in him. I was very disappointed in myself. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's a learning curve. Yeah. I knew that we will gain a lot of experience by go coming to Tokyo, and I that really helped us since then as well. Yeah. The experiences and the the all the mistakes and all the things are the learning process, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You can't be afraid of failure yeah. if you want to grow. Yeah, that's a great uh, advice for the uh, our children and also yeah. the sports lovers too. So, the apart from the equestrian, are yeah. there any professions that you are currently doing, uh, involving in? Um, I mean, when I'm competing, 
it's very, very time consuming. Yeah. I'm away on international competitions almost every weekend. Right. And when I'm home, maybe two days a week, I'm right. training full time. Mm -hmm. So it's no, not much time to have another professional. Right. Um, right. So fully equipped to the uh, equestrian. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this year I'm taking a break. Right. So I'm actually using this time to, I've always been involved in humanitarian work and fundraising and charities. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. Great. And it's something that really inspired me and it, it's something that is very close to my heart. Right. I've always been very fortunate to grow up in a country like Sweden. Uh, education was something we took for granted and yeah. it's, it's not in many parts of the world. Yeah. And I think every child should have right for a proper education sure. yeah. and that would just help uh, solve a lot of problems that we face today, like poverty and um, culture right. disagreements. Yeah. Um, and that's what I've been doing. I've been working with a, a charity named Cash and Rocket, huh. and also done a lot of humanitarian work with the Red Cross. Right, okay. Are there any special projects uh, in the near future that you have been affiliated with? As you said, that the uh, humanitarian processes? Uh, yeah, I went uh, with the Red Cross, and then I also support the school in South Africa. Right. Uh, that I, for the first time, actually had the time right. in November to go and meet the students and the children and see what we have actually right. achieved by fundraising and all that. So that was amazing. That was a fantastic experience. And I am invited here to Sri Lanka to uh, stay and visit the Teardrop Hotels. Right. And uh, I'm gonna learn more about the foundations that they uh, are involved with yeah. and support. Right. And that is a big part of this visit actually to uh, uh, go and see the children and the kids and the young women that we support. That's great. Mm -hmm. That is something that is, I really appreciate of your Thank you. Say. And of course, uh, folks, we are going to uh, the last part of the uh, interview actually. Uh, I just want to ask you about the uh, future plans of your, your, what I mean, the Paris Olympics is there. Yeah. What are your plans on uh, sports and your, uh, your life and the projects, of course. Yeah. So the, uh, what are your future plans in your future, Matilda? I mean, now when this year, when I'm taking a break, I'm training every day. Yeah. Uh, I'm building up my young horses yeah. to have uh, pro hopefully prospect of a, another Olympic course when right. I get going right. and for sure my biggest focus my end game my everything is to qualify for the Olympics in Los Angeles 2028 all ah, right uh, you are not going to compete in Paris right no because right. this is this year ah, and yeah, I'm taking the break, break. yeah right. okay Okay, then um, uh, that's great, and uh, I wish you all the very best in your you all so the much. future endeavors. So uh, basically, uh, we are very proud of you, and we hope that you will represent Sri Lanka and bring, bring some glory to Sri Lanka again. Thank you. So, folks, we are going to end the discussion DN one on one. Thank you for Matilda for coming for the interview, and we are going to end the show, and we will be back on another interesting show again. Thanks very much.